Welcome to round eight, the final round of the Versus Games Kissimmee Regional. We have two players on stream, one deck that hasn't been featured today, and the one you're handling that has been featured today, so yes. I'll let you handle that so if you want to go ahead. We have a, uh, another purely match uh, to see today. Uh, doesn't look anything, it looks like it's a little different, but what's definitely different is his opponent. So yes, yes it is. It is the playing? Andrew Fredella, and he's playing Fluanderese. Okay. Yeah, very excited about that one. Deck very close to myself. Are you um, familiar? I, I'm a, I dabble. <laughs> I dabble. I dabble. I, I dabble I, I'm, I'm at least a little familiar with this. <laughs> um, very interesting lineup. We're seeing something I've done before with the Triple Harvey's Feather Storm in the main. Mm -hmm. Something I didn't think I would go back to at all. Um, he is doing Thrust. He is doing one Morganite. He is doing Talents. So a lot of the cards I've been, you know, considering running. He's doing one Call By, which is very interesting, comboed with Shifter. Uh, I never was that crazy about it just because any time I'd, I'm, it's probably just like horrible variants. I've seen it work right. out like that. But, um, yeah, without further ado, we are getting into it. Oh, no. Uh, it yes. looks like the Flunderies experience is happening the for Dell Open set two and pass. Experience oh, that is the Flunderies experience in a nutshell. And and both of these players, we're not pulling from the back tables. This is table two at the regionals. Both these players um, are doing quite well. They are X1 currently right now. Um, so, yeah, once again, it, it's not like we're trying to pull from nowhere. Um, but uh, table one, we didn't want to feature because we saw uh, two players there. That we've already featured today, Joe Winkler, um, who is currently undefeated, and Hunter Lloyd, who is um, X01. Yeah, X01, correct. Yeah, yeah so yeah, uh, no sense in featuring a player again, but we have Table 2 instead. Yeah. Um, and then we are showcasing. Oh, that's interesting. He mains the Herald of the Abyss. Yeah, looks that's like it's very interesting. Does main one. Let's see, is is it one? Thrust? Yeah, yeah, he plays Thrust and one Talents. Yeah, yeah. I like how he wrote Thrust down here and then, like, Talents. talents yeah. Like He's like, yeah, thing. exactly. It's like a sandwich. Yeah. It's a triple sandwich. Uh, looks like he is adding, what was that, Leap off of yeah. Uh, li uh, yeah, Lily. Yeah, and he looks like he whiffed with the uh, the Purely earlier. So Yeah. Um, and then, once again, also, no, no shame to Perry. He's been a local player for quite some time. Very well known around this region. So, uh, accomplished duelist in his own right. Um, Fridella is, though, I believe, quite the Shonen Jump duelist, which, if you're new to this game, that is <laughs> quite some ancient terminology. It's not, it's not just some magazine or <laughs> yeah, exactly. some, some franchise. <laughs> some, uh, some magazine as a kid, you just tear the promos out of when no one's looking. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't do that. No, me neither. Yeah. No, I'm being serious. <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, so we have quite the opening from Pearly. Getting that extra card going second, playing against not really much here. And we'll just go right into it, looks like. Is it plump? Yep, it is plump. Let's see where it goes here. Then we have Pretty. He is chaining it to equip. Discarding and still summoning. Okay. Yep. So it's like they're just summoning another pearly, huh? Yeah, it's so weird to just see it. Like when he's like resolving the card, but it's yeah. no longer on field. I'm like, exactly. What's going on? <laughs> you you think the resolution's over? It's still just going on. Yeah. So now we're seeing another uh, pod duality uh, esque effect. Uh, Fredella declining the shuffle. Oh wow! All right, delicious it is. Uh, and there is Perry showing off that thrust he has main decked. Fredella just kind of taking it on, watching uh, Perry play. He He's going know. to Ensemble Nightingale. Okay. So we're going to go Battle Phase 400 twice. Gains 200 per material and gains an attack per material as well. Quite a scary combination of other decks that have utilized in the past, such as uh, Bird Up or Tri Char Brigade Leerless. Yeah. Um, I remember just uh, being pretty lazy playing that deck sometimes and just saying, you know what, I'm just going to put a bunch of materials <laughs> under this and just end the game <laughs> instead of, like, drawing it out further. So here we are seeing the Noir tap down. And is this going to be, yep, downered into Zeus. And then we have, looks like Leap. He is, in fact, setting the leap, and we are going to go to end phase. He's missing the trigger, though, on the field spell. Am, are we is reading that the triple map? 
Is it? I think that's triple map. That is, in fact, triple map. <laughs> the opposite problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is brutal. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I don't even think you would activate anything here as, uh, as Perry. It is just a pass back. I oh, my gosh. I would just not give him the information. Yeah, no, Sorry. I would just not even do anything. I'm, I would just be terrified of my opponent going for a, for a thrust activation here, a Towns activation. Um, yeah, no, very, very smart on Perry, just not activating anything. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the games continue as is. I guess maybe soon he can uh, attack with Zeus <laughs> and put another Zeus on top of it. Um, Yo. Yeah, so he's going for what is that? Which one is that? I'm sorry. That is, I believe, Delicious Memory. I don't think that's Delicious. It's either Delicious or it's... No, because Happy and Pretty, I believe, are two Ultras. Two Ultras are rare and a common. No, Pretty is an Ultra. Pretty is an Ultra? Yeah. No. I think Happiness. Yep, Ferdella just... Not wanting to play the game out any further. Uh, I completely understand where he's coming from. Yeah. That is that is the Flunder experience. I mean, his hand was insane. If he, small, if he saw <laughs> he a small a bird. bird, yeah. He had, he had Feather Storm. He already had Dreaming Town. He had maps for days. Like, I'm not sure there was any other card he needed except a small bird. Yeah. That was very unfortunate. Um, yeah, Fredella going through the process of siding here. Uh, let's take a look at his side deck. He does opt to play, like I said, the one Morganite in the main. He does side into two more. He has two Herald of the Abyss, uh, one Feather Duster, one more Unexplored Winds in Dreaming Town, three evenly matched, two Cosmic, and the three Ultimate Slayer. So I'm not really seeing much for uh, for Dell to really be putting in here. It looks like he's just gone to really not even worry about siding draw or anything like that. He's really just trying to leverage the shifter as hard as he can. Yeah. Um, and I'm not really seeing anything too out of the ordinary except the one Snow. Um, he's playing a standard three Eagle and three Rabina, one Stree, one Toucan, uh, Avion, Ryza, and two Impin. Uh, most people will opt for three Impin. My, I myself right now would opt for two. Um, but the one Snow for the five Tributes. Um, but, yeah, no, not really much to really add in here. Uh, I guess he's really just trying to leverage the ability to use Morganize as often as he can. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like it would be pretty decent in the matchup against Burly, but I, I think I'd rather see Shifter in that matchup. And when you have Shifter, Morganite won't ever really be utilized for that graveyard effect. So um, looks like we get a second chance here for Fredello. Hopefully he will be able to... Not have the Flunderies experience and have the opposite <laughs> Flunderies, the, <laughs> the fun Flunderies experience. The Flunderies stream experience. It yeah, exactly. Like oh, yeah, no. Anytime I've ever been on stream or feature for Flunderies, it's worst conceivable the hands. birds are just camera shy. Yeah, exactly. Just explain it. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Most most birds are camera shy. Yeah. Uh, we see Fredella kind of shaking his head here, but uh, we will cut back to the gameplay. And okay, we're seeing we a D shifter. And it looks like he has Morganite double duality. No, Morganite duality advent avion. So hopefully this duality can get something here. Into a prosperity. Probably grabbing that off rip. For sure. He can't be touched by Droll. So, yeah, just most likely just grabbing that duality. Or, excuse me, prosperity. Yep. Prosperity is banished now. Or, excuse me, duality is banished now. Then we'll see a six reveal. I'm not sure what Perry's hand is. Yes, the prosperity vanish is always very important. Got it is sure. very funny, though, seeing him on Ultimate Slayer, because if he did come across a Maximus, he'd be stocked. Cause I'd, I'd, there's Entis in there. There's <laughs> everything in the <laughs> world <laughs> to make use of. I'm pretty sure, yeah, he's even playing the new, uh, the uh, Synchro from the new set, the yeah. Golden Cloud Beast Ma Malong. That card is really good. Yeah, Ooh, no, it definitely is. Oh, we see Ruby in the last Very card. nice, very nice. So we do have the Morganite already in hand. He did side into two more. Um, very interesting tactic here. But, uh, I mean, Morganite, as in a, in a grind-up matchup like this, like the Morganite's just going to get him so much value. Oh, yeah. He's, I feel like he should be able to um, to outpace his uh, his opponent. Oh, we do we see a Pankratops in his opponent's end in Perry's hand. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, most definitely is. And then we see Eaglin touchdown here. And then seeing by Fredella's hand, I think he may be able to go for the, um, yeah, because he already has uh, Advent. He may be able the to go for the double impin. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming, but it's just at the cost, unfortunately, of banishing the D-shifter. So I'm not sure that's something he wants to do. 
um, which I think he may be trying to hold on to the Morganite to make sure the uh, D shifter can be used again. He's adding both birds back, which is very interesting. So he's kind of leaving himself open into Ash for next turn. I probably would just left the Rabina banished. Is grab grabbing Dreaming Town. Let's see, let's see. So will he activate the Morganite? That's what I'm curious about right now. He, I feel like he will not. Yeah, okay. So he, he's more interested in keeping the shifter in rotation, which I completely agree with. Um, but Harry, or Perry, excuse me, <laughs> Perry does seem like he has a pretty good hand here as well. Yeah, I see three or four quick play spells at least. Yeah. So he does have the ability to pretty easily deal with the uh, Impen if it was threatening with the Panger Tops. So we see my friend Pearly coming down. Such a great card, by the way. Yeah. Pay five. And the fact that, like, any time your Pearly card leaves the field because the opponent's card. Three. Yeah, you get <laughs> three Pearly cards from your graveyard. Different names. Yeah. It's it's just mind-blowing. So we're seeing happiness. Delicious. Is that I? Uh, Whatever. I don't, I don't know. know. Let's find out. We're going to find yeah. out for sure now. Uh, and, and this, uh, I mean, they all look the same. We thought tier cards were bad. We'd be like, which one is that? Tier cards are a little bit more like, I don't know. At least there's different levels. Yeah. Like, these are all just quick plays. With a cat on them. Yeah. Oh, we see the Pankersop summon. In defensive mode. You know, look them up. Different images. So that's happy memory. Pretty memory. That's the ultra, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Versus memory. So it's happy memory then that he added, right? Uh, I believe so. I wish it just told me the rarity. I guess I can just look it up this way. Yeah, just go on TCG, please. And he's adding leap off of Lily. Targeting Panker Tops. So yeah. it's that one right there. Yeah, Happy's a rare. Okay, yeah. That looks like Delicious discarded. Fortunately for a D shifter, these cards are being banished. Kara, Rainbow Bridge. Oh, off the last one. Pretty. That is pretty. Pretty lucky. <laughs> <laughs> There's your one. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> and you're done. This is going to be very tough. Spiral tough. You need to leave. <laughs> So he's thinking about what beauty? Into beauty. Yep, there's beauty. That is the imperm one, right? I believe so. Quick effect imperm. But it looks like it, it won't even like really phase uh, Fredella because he has the advent face down. Yeah, and it has to have pretty memory for it to be a quick effect. Which I believe that is under it. Yeah. So he is activating the advent here. Or excuse me, the or my gosh, streaming down. Do you play Flunder at all? Uh yeah, I dabble. <laughs> not not much, sorry. So we're seeing the Eagle and touchdown. So he's just gonna go in that. Yep, exactly. He's gonna flip the advent. He's not scared of beauty whatsoever. And there it goes. There's the bird. Uh, yep, we know the rest of his hand. At this point you just grab two can, right? Well, it's Eaglin, so we have to go. Oh, you're saying with, uh, with Advent, Advent, yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe he's just going to search right for Impen. Oh, he's adding map. Interesting. Yeah, I guess because the Rubina is going to be able to search with. Uh, you might as well just grab Toucan, though. Weird. I guess it's just all going to happen anyway. Uh, you have to summon first before the card goes to grave, but oh well. <laughs> Some things I pay attention <laughs> to. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. I wanted to list only. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, in all technicality, he could definitely get him right there because the card went to graveyard. Yeah. 
Oh, that's so bad for him. That's so unfortunate. Now he can just add Toucan. Toucan add back Impin and then just go from there yeah. and tribute the Impin off for uh, Ryza. Yeah. Yeah, this is that's so bad for him. Yeah, so he's just going to go normal summon Toucan. He could go add back Advent, but I doubt he would. I think he's just going to go right. Oh, he could also go for Dreaming Town. Set him up for next turn. But, I mean, yeah. he could also just Dreaming Town it back. Yeah, he's just going right for Impin. Yeah, so he's going right for Impin. He's going to tribute summon and then uh, most likely add unexplored wins here and then tribute for Ryza. Yep, add back Toucan. And in my situation, I'll most likely add Advent or unexplored wins. But, yep, unexplored wins is the card to go for here. And then we're going to see the Ryza touch down and spin some of his cards away. Which my friend Pearly has no cards to trigger for, but we are restacking the Ryza, and that's one of the most important things. So he's going to put back Beauty. Shifter. Is he putting Ryza back? Yes, he is. So that's very interesting. So if he has another way to get to another level 1, he can just make Zeus. Yeah. Which he should have a way to get to another level one. He also has thrust in hand, right? Do you believe, I'm not entirely sure. Is he a trap in hand? I know he has the pearly. I think he might have thrust, but I mean, Fredella just best. cleared his field, so it's only going to be able to set something. It's pretty smart. Yeah, it does look like thrust. I'm not sure if that was Fredella's goal, but either way, it was very heads up to get his field cleared like I, I i feel like his goal was just to make sure the riser occurs but the added benefit of this thrust just not being able to yep parry saw enough yeah 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 so we are going to that all important game three and what i was saying earlier too in the earlier rounds when uh losing that die roll but taking that game one it's just so like it, it's it's a massive it's, it's so good for the rest of the match it, it feels incredible when that yeah. happens because you know game two can be that buffer just trying to feel out the rest of your opponent's strategy and then that game three, you get to go first. You get to control the tempo. I mean, barring what your hand is, of course. But that, you know, it, it's just so incredible. It's because uh, it, when you lose a die roll, you feel like the game's already stacked against you. You have to fight back. And then now you're just in that much of a better situation. So what are you thinking right now, Alejandro? I don't know, I'm just trying to see what, uh, what Perry will probably be doing now. That's that he's going to be going first again. Um, yeah. Seems like, you know, from looking at his side deck, there's a lot of cards that just, like, don't really do anything. To yeah, like yeah. Wonder. I mean, we see Xyz Encore, which is the first time we've seen this all weekend, yeah. which is really cool to see in the first place. But, yeah, unfortunately, does nothing against this matchup. It's probably just, like, cert like adding another, th like, thrust and maybe, like, a dark ruler to, like, prevent from any board that he builds. Yeah. Um, and just, like, try and establish a uh, a towers. But then even then, if he gets the unexplored wins, that's a... It's a problem. I guess he just bounced it, but still. Yeah, well, I mean, still, it, it definitely is. It can definitely be an issue. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what he's going to be signing. He's probably just going to be returning his deck to, like, how it was. But, I mean, we're looking at his main deck. He, he only chose to play three draw and Lockbird in the main. Yeah, that is the only uh, hand, hand trap. trap I see in there. Everything yeah. else is just, like, a going second card uh, slash board breaker. So. Yeah, no. We, we only see – so it's two thrust, one talents, one dark ruler. Um and then it looks like really just the early tools. cards and on top of that. Kara. One Curry Kara. One, I mean, you can just search the Curry Kara off of uh, Thrust, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe someday. <laughs> yeah, maybe well, someday. You could technically if you get where Arf now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Thanks thanks for bridging that for me. Um, Small world bridge. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we're it, it's very impressive he's made it this far. I mean, like I said, this we're we're not just featuring like table five hundred people. These people, no. you know, table two, uh, going into round eight, so they're doing quite well. You were excited to see a Flunder person too. Yeah, no, I I mean, I originally had someone else chosen for our uh, for our round eight matchup, and he was hesitant about playing. Oh really? Yeah, I I mean I I didn't want to force it on him. I was kind of like kind of trying to talk him into it, and then once I found another option, I was like, let's was just go. Yeah, yeah, it was Sebastian oh, yeah, Todd. Yeah. Yep. I I was like asking him if he wanted to. He's like, oh no, I don't want to be bozoed on stream, bro. Like, oh, I don't want to <laughs> lose on stream, bro. Oh, bro like, bro, God. curse up stream, curse up feature <laughs> match, bro. And I was just like, all right, yeah, sure, okay, let me go look. Um. Yeah. Then we have oh, who is that? That is uh. The guy we were asked to stream or uh, to feature. 
Oh, yeah, home freeze. Yeah. Yep, Mr. Uh, stun player himself. Stun player himself. Oh, and here we go, the almighty game three. See so here we here. are. Oh, and the effects are resolving, so we're not seeing a shift there. I doubt Fredella fears Gamma in this deck. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, typically whenever they play their first quick play, you want to just meet that with this shifter immediately. Sure. Especially when it's sleeping memory and letting you draw cards. Like oh, yeah, it's, it's just huge. It's just so good. Um, yeah, so now we see pearly effect. We see a pearly, my pretty, friend. and delicious. Oh, no, it's field spell. So we'd be adding pretty. That's my friend, I think. Right? Is it? No, you can't add. I, I didn't think you'd add my friend. Oh, yeah, friend. I'm sorry. That's purely. Yeah. I don't know what these cards are anymore. It's, they all look the same. It's <laughs> yeah, brutal. Yeah, yeah. It's brutal. That's their own fault. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, what do they expect from us? Right. Yeah. Um, but here we go. Perry just taking a second to think out the rest of his turn. Doesn't want to misstep whatsoever. We are in the last round of the tournament, so A lot very of pressure crucial. sometimes. Huh? A lot of pressure sometimes. Right no. Here. It, it can <laughs> <laughs> it can be a lot of pressure just trying to make sure you sequence everything correctly, especially in a deck like this. I it definitely can have a very high ceiling in terms of how you sequence things. So there we see my friend Pearly coming down. Oh, was it was it my friend Pearly? Oh, interesting. <laughs> was it? I'm sorry. It looks like it, yeah. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> oh, roll it back on the stream. We'll just check. <laughs> roll the clip. Yo, oh, where are I was now? joking. I was joking, guys. I did not realize. Is it in? Do we miss it? He's played three of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I honestly did For not the see Droll that. and Lockbird, okay. that free 2,000 damage. Let's go. But you still take that damage. <laughs> but you still take that. That's very nice. That is not a good card to have played against Flunderies. That is not a good card whatsoever. Especially dealing with the potential unaffected monster that's just going to be shuffling back your cards. That is very rough. Let's see what we have. So we have a. So you have Prosperity and Avion and an Eagle in, in Fredella's hands. Over. Oh, yikes. All I those mean, cards say Droll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, part of the pain of playing Flunderies is not knowing exactly when the Droll comes down or if your opponent has it, but now you know. Yeah. So it's like you – well, I, I think it's a little bit better. Now you can maybe structure your turn differently. You know it's going to come down, but, you know, maybe there's a situation in which, like, Fredella can somehow get to Shifter. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Maybe a six card he's hoping for Shifter. That would be crazy. Yeah, it would be. It would be. Um, let's see. We see Lily come down. Lily effect to add. Assuming field spell here. Oh, oh no. Nope. We're going for leap. So Lily effect most likely to... Yep. With delicious. Make plump. Plump. Then plump effect to attach. Up to two. So we're going for sleepy and dark ruler. It's crazy to think about that. It just equips any spells. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be there on graveyard. Just yeah, any yeah. two spells. Just any two spells from graveyard. Yep. So now we're going to see 2,000 damage from where Arf that resolving. And then we are going to pass turn. We're going to draw one in the standby phase due to plump. And then we're going to see leap for Noir, and then draw one again for uh, Sleeping Memory. Can't complain about Pot of Green. No, you cannot. <laughs> Especially if there is more uh, more Sleepies under there. Yeah. He could potentially be drawing a bunch. Is that a Thrust in his hand, though? I see a Thrust, and I think what it might have been. A, I don't know if that was a Flash Blossom. Stree. Stree. Evenly. Evenly. Oh, my gosh. That is so strong. I mean, the first Evenly would connect anyway. Yeah. So it's not like... No that crazy. No super heavy samurai nonsense here. Yeah, exactly, no exactly. Mickey. But I mean, essentially, it may just be the thrust setting feather storm, depending on if Fredella kept one in. That is true. Yeah. So now we're seeing the draw one here, and then the quick effect to attach, and then now leap to summon Noir over Plump, which Fredella is not having any response to. So now we'll get another trigger of Sleepy here to draw an additional card. So I mean. He already has Droll. I'm not sure. I guess he's just digging for more follow-up here. Yeah. So, it looks to be Imp and Stree, Thrust, Avion, Elin, Evenly? I think I mean, oh, Prosperity. Not, yeah. Oh, it could have just not been Avion. Yeah. Maybe Imp and instead. Maybe I saw, I think I, okay. I saw Blue, so I was well, like. Well, we know for sure, uh, Evenly, <laughs> we know for sure definitely Evenly. Yeah. Evenly, Imp and uh, Thrust. Pot of Prosperity that you saw in Eaglin Street. Is that his full six cards? I think those are six, those six cards. Okay, okay, okay.
And that is what a six material noir. That is should be five, right? Well, there there's a a lily underneath the five. I I think it was placed oh, back incorrectly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is six material noir. Yep. So we're going right to battle phase. I wonder what we keep. <laughs> yep. No hesitation from Barry's. Like that's Are you fine. Sure? You can think about it. Yeah. And then now we see here will be the first interaction. So I I think. Oh no! This is gonna be so rough just because the noir can put everything back. Yeah. I think I think the first interaction here. Okay, interesting. I find it interesting. He puts it on the side deck. Yeah. Oh no no no! Sorry, I'm just thinking of all the plays because he can go for Ryza here, and the second a material is detached, but I mean most likely if Perry's you know pretty heads up about it is he can just start shuffling back the materials as they're summoned. We guess to detach more than. One, right? He has to detach two. Yeah. But as long as he has a level one underneath, it becomes a quick effect. And still putting the map sideways, I guess that's... So we can see it. Oh, fair, fair, fair. Thanks for that <laughs> Yep, six materials underneath. So he realistically has two detaches. Yeah. Leading off a tree, that makes sense. I think that's correct. Yep. Token. Okay. I wonder though. So, Noir. Oh, this could be huge. He could shuffle back the evenly to make uh, Stree miss. Oh yeah, because is it either player's graveyard? Yeah. Is graveyard too? Noir says graveyard. That's cool. Yeah. I actually didn't know that. I'm pretty <laughs> double check me at this point. Oh yeah. Okay. So he's just laying it. Yeah. Oh, banish anyway. Then we're gonna see Eaglin come down. Yeah. Opponent controls are in their graveyard. Yeah, so that that could have been very good with the. Uh, okay, so he's just going right for Impin. He's gonna summon the two can. And then just like the, anything. It here. just not even activate any effects of search. This is what I'm talking about. This is very good for Fidella having the information of the droll yeah. instead of just having to like face check in. So I'm, I'm sure he would just let out prosperity, um, or maybe he he would have been heads up enough. But it, it is still just you know showing how how to play around the droll and how to make it you know get as much value as he can on that first initial search. Yeah. Um. So it is looking like. Oh wait, maybe he didn't have thrust. It, it appears it looked like he had um. A map instead of thrust. Yeah, it looks like we got Empen here. You know, my thing is, you know, he has Prosperity Eaglin in hand. So now we have to like, see if there is a way, to get rid or like to establish that we'll get rid of the noir yeah without i mean you're gonna play in a draw anyway because you're searching yeah so i'm not really sure there is a way though no because i mean the second this resolves i, I wonder if for will go through the process of even summoning i doubt it yeah that's fair but so like, it looks like he's foregoing to summon do you do you even activate the draw here i um he's out of normal summons oh but he plays morganite yeah. So. Oh, uh, that's is tough. I don't know because like the problem is like if you so if you activate draw here, you're playing into a thrust that he didn't activate the draw. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Which I mean, like I think is like a fair. Well, he like, he's already activated monster effects this turn, so he, no matter what, he'd be playing in a thrust. Right, right, right. So, like realistically, I think this, this got him nothing. That's so unfortunate. But it gets drolled. Yeah. Ryza in hand isn't bad. I mean, it's pretty bad. This is nothing what he was hoping for. I'm not even sure exactly what he was hoping for. Yeah. Um, let me see his deck list. Maybe he was hoping for Harold. Harold would have been great there. Yeah. Or Thrust. Yeah. I guess he gets rolled, but still. Yeah, Perry is showing some zen-like. Patience. <laughs> yeah, it is very impressive. He's not being shuttered by anything. He's he is keeping this troll. And he's honestly just playing this big game of cat and mouse with Andrew. Yeah. Like, he's like, Andrew knows the, the draw is there, and he's doing his best to play around it. Ooh. Well, that's a big reveal. Yeah, no. I mean, it would be fine, like, if he grabs unexplored wins and activates it, there's only one way for him to get an additional normal summon. That would be uh, Morganite. Yeah. And the second the Morganite resolves, you just shuffle back the uh, unexplored wins. So Perry just playing this huge game of cat and the mouse, not flinching at all, yeah. and never giving in to activating the droll. That is very, very <laughs> good playmaking. Very nice, because it's it's been very clear, probably from Perry to the, from the start, that it is just not going to be um, 
uh, that he's just not going to give up a, you know, a search. Yeah. The searches aren't really doing anything. Yeah. Like, they're pushing him an inch, but it seems like Perry here has, like, a mile. Yeah. No, that's a great way to put it. And, I mean, even here, I think he's just verifying that he's out of normal summons. Yeah. It looks like Fredella will just be setting one in passing, and then Perry will just be able to shovel that right back into the deck at end phase. I would go ahead and activate right go ahead right away and activate this at end phase. Yep. Yeah. He's going to be putting back the Dreaming Town. Fredella doing his, his best to play around it, but unfortunately it is just very difficult to play around a, a shuffle back to deck quick effect. Oh, no, oh, back to deck champ. <laughs> it's okay. Figure it out. We just got heads up from Joe Winkler, the man who we featured early in the round. He went 8 0 with Super Heavy Samurai. That's awesome. Yeah, no, we saw his deck list earlier. He was playing pretty traditional build, but I mean, he was playing it very well. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, very. It, I mean, it is the deck to beat. Definitely the breakout deck for this format. I think if, even though people are looking forward to purely, I think like Super Heavy Samurai had a lot of hype behind it. Oh, it definitely does. It definitely does. I mean, the original hype of the, uh, you know, hand loop and FTK and everything like that. But, I mean, as long as you focus, I feel like, on the bread and butter of the deck, which yeah. is just almost – some people have called it mid-range, but I guess when you compare that version over to an FTK or a hand loop, right. it probably seems mid-range. Yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely not the case. But, um, yeah, no, Perry's showing, once again, the power. He, he still just now has the troll. Yeah. Um, he just has to forego normal summoning. But even then, even if he does normal summon, I guess he might just activate. Yep, spin back yeah. the map. He is out of – Andrew is out of plays. Now Andrew is just going to be sitting here watching, and he is free to normal summon, activate Lily, get that search off, add my friend, and then go from there. It is not looking too good. So even if – even if Fredella has another turn, it is – not going to be in his favor. Yeah. Uh, this is very crucial for Perry. This is going very well for him. And it really just accounts to his 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 concentration and focus here. He did not give up anything. Right. Fredella challenged him on so many different ways. He's like, I'm gonna establish this M pin, I'm gonna make it to my first search. I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, and Perry was just like, okay. Yeah, I think he just realized that like all the plays that he was making were just like already suboptimal in order yeah. to play around the droll that even if he was able to establish a board, he just, like, beats through it. Yeah. So. Yeah, most definitely. Very heads up. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, once again, they're both doing very well. It was great playmaking on both of them. It's just, you know, when you're playing against a card like Troll, it can be quite oppressive and hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. So we see my friend resolve. Like we're gonna then we see Lily effect, probably going for what happiness. It's looking like a plump. Oh, plump. Little plump. <laughs> <laughs> little little pump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, field spell, very I nice. It looks like he has what sleepy and delicious in hand, and a pretty. Yeah. And a draw, of course. How could we forget that? That's what put him down to six thousand. Or I guess seven thousand because the one thousand gain. Yeah. Perry catching himself before he discards to resolve. Uh, somebody to keep in mind, all these quick play spells are discard at resolution and not as cost. Um, so that's how you're able to use cards like Snow, Brow, and stuff like that. Shadals. Shadals, exactly. Um, just to get their effects off because they, be they are being sent for card effect instead of cost. We're seeing another Pearly touchdown, and we're going to see the Excavate effect. Thrust. A Thrust, Pearly, and my friend Pearly. Well, we hit something at least. Hello. Thing. Yep, very nice. Attaching the unexplored wins. Yeah. Verdilla does play multiple copies of it, though. So that is not the last one we are going to see of it. Two more sleepies. This is a very large, uh, very large boy. Should be a. Uh, Was that one, two, three, four? It's, eight, it's six materials, I believe. 
Four, five, six, yeah. So it's getting 300 for each. Oh, well. That thing is plump. Yeah. Is this plump. my second pun? Or? Uh, I don't know. A little too many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on thin ice. You're on thin ice, buddy. Here comes Delicious. So, I mean, he might just be able to make a Noir and end on a massive Zeus as well. Which, I mean, once again, like, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Maybe evenly, but. <laughs> and you're back to square one. Yeah, exactly. And he's. Still have a droll in hand. Still has droll. <laughs> like, the only thing outing this is just, like, or the only thing that for Delicate Oak for a six card there was uh, Shifter. If he had Shifter, it would have been free game on oh, the yeah. whole entire turn. I think that would have been his game, honestly. Oh, it, yeah. It, like, he just has to deal with Noir bounce, and that's it. Yep. That thrust keeps coming off the top. That's yeah. so interesting. Did he side into more by chance? I think he only plays two, right? Oh, no, he plays. Yeah, he, he, plays has, he has the ability to play three, siding into one more. Yeah. Which is what we expected, you know, with, like, the the Flunder matchup. It's not like he has a lot of. Princess Sprite. Oh, God, interesting. Yeah. Detach. Call the top card. Add Rainbow Bridge. That's probably the worst card you could add <laughs> into your hand. Oh, no, I, I lied. Probably, like. The wh what's his uh, Curse of Beast card? Oh, Cobalt Eagle. Yeah. Probably Cobalt Eagle is probably the worst card you could add. Would have went to the grave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so turning Noir to attack mode. Then we are just double checking all the materials underneath and all the effects. The good thing, though, is Fridella has also gained a 1,000 from any purely spell that uh, Perry has activated, as well as, like, he hasn't activated Advent yet. But, yeah. you know. And purely is not known for just being able to kill. Oh, so. yeah, no. But it, it's the same idea as kind of like Flunder is we may not end the game immediately, but we're going to make it very unplayable for yeah. you. It's like you breathe, I'll summon. Then we're going to be met with a Zeus and another Noir. Yep. Which I'm not 100% sure Fredell is as familiar with his deck list. Oh, is he thinking of going into Downard? No, he's just going to go right into Zeus. I yeah. think he realized it was only going to be a three mad Zeus. Um, so we're going to go end phase, field spell activates. Finally, this card's activated. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it a bunch of times, but it's never been activated. That is the yeah. third. No, Sleepy. Yeah, that is a draw three. Yep. Fredella draws for turn. And he's just going to call it there. Yeah. yeah, it's there's no point, unfortunately. Fredella having a very rough time. He got the die roll. Bricked on three map. Yeah. Three map. That's that so is such a nightmare. Um, you know, but it is the case with Flunder. He was doing extremely well throughout the day, but unfortunately met the very last round and bricked that game one, that all-important game one. So that was very unfortunate for him, but... Um, so, I mean, that was the last round. Uh, potentially player interview coming up after this, but what a tournament. Yeah. What a tournament. How do you feel about this? Uh, this is, um, so honestly, I expected this format to just be, like, riddled with just, like, super heavy samurai purely. I mean, which, like, I mean, it, kind of it. it <laughs> we've been featuring is. it a lot. It was definitely the majority. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's, like, 